I'll give you a little update on the uh, the battery electric bus in the public transport operation. But since I'm not really that detailed into the technology, I, I need to start uh, more from a uh, let let look on the bus in its context, so to say. We it's very important when we work with electric buses, and uh, Volvo has been a front runner in this. Uh, we have been doing this for I would say 10, 15, 20 years uh, working in the area. It, it has very it's very clear that the bus technology maybe it it's not the biggest question actually. So um, so I think that's my, my presentation today with kind of look into this from, from more a system type of perspective to see where does what technology features are maybe more of importance. So I, I mean, looking at this kind of picture where you, you start with the integration in the transport system, you really need to understand what is the electric truck and what can it actually achieve? Uh, because it, uh, even if the bus might be easier to, to operate, uh, there are another uh, type of new sector that needs to be understood. And of course, this is uh, the charging system. Uh, I think the, the energy provider system, how to provide energy for a fleet of buses. That's a new new thing actually for the bus operators when we are uh, we have, of course, the battery itself. It's a new, quite expensive and heavy and uh, also in rapid development. So the battery needs to be looked into. Maybe the chassis can be uh, similar to what your what is already in a, a standard bus of today. But, but it's still, uh, there are new things coming in here when it comes to the electrification topics, how to really adjust the chassis for that. And that depends on, the, of course, the, the, uh, the situation where this needs to be done. Um, the control connectivity, it's also something that needs to be addressed. The driver uh, needs to be aware of the sharding station of the bus the charging situation of the bus and when to charge and how to run. Uh, th there are maybe new uh, things regarding uh, safety requirements that needs to be taken into cons consideration. And I will also touch upon the kind of the electric propulsion system, the engine um, more and have some kind of a, at least a highlight about how to compare this with the, the internal combustion engine, the ICE. So look into the more the, the integration in the transport system. I think we start always discussing this from, from kind of the top. What are the kind of the, what are the driving forces for electrification? Why are you doing this? Um, there are a lot of good things to go for elect electrification of the public transport system. But, but it's important to understand why, what are the driving forces? Are you actually solving the right topics? So of course, emissions is the local emissions, particles, NOx. But we as increasingly see that the noise, uh, noise uh, emissions is even more important and uh, also the less vibrations from a truck the drivers are very happy with with it with an electric bus because it's less vibrating uh, so it's a lot of benefit of course if you look into this the U united nations the global goals for health well-being and and also linking this to the sustainable cities and transport systems but here you also need to understand where does the electric energy come from uh, if you produce electric energy from coal, uh, then you might end up in an even worse situation when it comes to emissions uh, local. But of course, there are a lot of room here for innovation. This is quite new sector. It's a, it's a new type of product. The uh, diesel engine has been around for, for a very long time, but now we are we're seeing a, a dramatic development in the area of electrification and in electrification of the public transport system. 
And, and of course, from Volvo, we are also very engaged in the trucking uh, domain. You see electric truck, even heavier electric trucks. The climate issue, of course, uh, it's, everyone is talking about that. And, and also the safety topic. We always want to discuss safety. We need to consider this. Uh, it, it, that, that also needs to be the of taken into consideration from a driving force to improve safety. I think it's also important to work to really align with the city strategies. When when you look into the uh, sorry, I missed the other uh, section when it policy, but but they, they really why why are Kathmandu looking into this? Um, but of course, to align with reducing local po pollutants, noise. CO2 uh, uh, also increase the, the use actually of, uh, of the public transport system to make them more attractive um, and to be more user friendly. And also this level with lower noise, lower uh, emissions. And you can actually, as we, I mean, my behind me, you can see the picture. We are testing indoor bus stops. Uh, we can actually run the bus in a completely new way to integrate the system and, and really find new way of doing this. But it's important to work together here with, uh, and of course the, the, you, you need to shift here now from the old bus fleet and uh, towards a uh, clean technology, kind of how to integrate the new technology with the old technology uh, and, and really to work on this, what the Europeans call modal shift, shift um, to public transport. So that there is many good things in order to drive for this. And I think we see that. And then, of course, um, to operate an electric bus or public transport system, it, it's, uh, it's slightly, it's a new world. Uh, and uh, of course, you, you need to understand what are the new roles that needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, what are the operational targets really for? Uh, so there are many, of course, new players coming in, but you also have the existing players, but you also kind of, you need to look into the, um, one, one new thing is this power utility, where uh, you need to provide the electric infrastructure uh, and you should have a stable, power supply when it comes to these, these different, uh, when to sh really charge and do, otherwise it, it's not as flexible as a diesel solution where you can fill up in the morning and, and it's, uh, but you, you, it needs to be taken into consideration. And of course the operator uh, really how to, how to run this, how to make it happen uh, really the operational targets, uh, reliability, cost, and even if the, the product might be less complicated, the, the issue is also it, it's less known. And uh, in electric bus, it's a new type of technology. Um, you also have uh, potentially lower uh, maintenance and operational cost, but the consequence is higher cost when it comes to the battery um, and, and you need the investment in the battery. The battery needs to be maintained in a good way. You also have high power, uh, high voltage in the vehicle that could provide a, a safety issue when it comes to maintaining these vehicles, new type of regulatory, um, you, you need to cons consider this as well. So th this needs to be taken into the whole picture uh, of, of the system perspective and uh, with the role and operational targets. And then we, we also, when I'm working on this, you also see that there are, the business model here gets quite complicated. Who owns, it's not only the bus, but you also need to invest in the sharding system. Uh, you also really to build a new type of, infrastructure equipment for, for this, who owns this? What are the opportunities to get, how to fund this and, uh, and really pay for what? Are you buying a bus or will you actually 
invest in 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 this uh, so i think it's it's very important to clear out who will how is the funding mechanism how will that work really what are the uh, the, the, there are many new actors coming in and there are quite high costs for some of these this investment that needs to be done it's definitely not only the bus so uh, so it's there could be benefit of course for a lower fuel cost or energy cost overall but at the same time this will be uh, eaten up or uh, you need to invest more in the charging equipment on the battery on the bus uh, and also the, the there are things about of course there are a lot of subsidy program in order to promote electrification uh, that could also have a dimensioning effect on what type of technology you will be using depending on how the subsidies are directed uh, that will also make an impact on the technology selection of technology uh, of course the and vehicle age structure how long Will you foresee what is the operational targets for how many years will these vehicles be op in operation in order to be profitable and so on and so forth and so they of course the it's boiled down to the specifications what what will you actually work on so the specifications is much about the requirements and need what you you're having some planning the distance between charging um locations where how, how are you operating what line operation this will be very much dimensioning the the sizing of what type of equipment you need to fit on the bus you don't want to have too much batteries uh, at the same time you need to have where can you locate the charging uh, stations can you charge online or can you do uh, like um, of course what are the operational uh, requirements for the route? Can you do depot charging? You charge overnight and then you do some kind of top off charging op during an operation uh, when, when you run this. Uh, you have other things to consider is also the climate. Uh, I mean, Nepal can also be, well, of course, it, you have a hot, but you can also have a cold climate. So it's um, the heating, the air conditioning, um, the energy usage. Sometimes we see that uh, the, uh, the air conditioning consume maybe more energy than actually propel, pro, push, you know, driving the, 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 the bus. And um, then, of course, the operational targets, what are the passenger, the load situation, how much passenger will you run, uh, the speed of this, the energy usage. Uh, and it's very much about the battery configuration, how much battery will you have on board or how little can you have on board, because battery are also heavy, uh, which that could also have an impact on the chassis dimensioning if you load many tons of batteries you actually transport more batteries than people and passenger is that really what you want to do uh, and then of course it's linked to where to how much charging power uh, what are the charging speed required um, th this also put a, put a dimensioning from the electricity grid how much power can you really provide and how much do you actually need uh, in order to run the, the bus operation. So I think this is very important to, to, to really understand before really building a bus. Uh, I can mention, and you are, many of you are aware of this, we in Gothenburg, we have been doing this in a kind of a collaboration environment uh, since now almost 10 years. We have been working with the city authorities, with the with the energy providers, uh, with the energy um, and also charging equipment. So I think the, it's very important to set up this kind of structure around to really discuss and to really work on the different solutions, involve the different actors all, all the way, try to grow this. For us, it has taken many years to understand are we actually working on the right topics and how to work on this. 
uh, uh, before we actually could launch the first electric bus in operation. Uh, so I think we have a lot of experience and I think uh, from the electricity, uh, electricity package, there are a lot of uh, that good learnings that can be brought out from this. So then, then taking a little more technical step then towards the bus, the technology features of electric bus to look into the charging solutions, the battery system and the propulsion system, um, more select three of those. So if you start looking at the bus um, and then and, and the battery, we um, in, in Europe, we, we are working on low floor buses and I'm sure you are not working on you probably have a high floor low entry type of bus that you will, will consider for Nepal uh, because that but that is more suitable for, uh, for what type of road condition you have a low floor could be good when you have a very uh, kind of smooth uh, road surface uh, so this is kind of what we are working on. So our expertise is definitely in the European, uh, where in this case, we actually have the mounting of the battery in the roof. Yeah, I provided a picture here uh, where you, you actually have, the, you can store many different battery packs and you, you place them on the roof because that provides a, a better planning in, and you can have really build low floor buses. Uh, there is a video here if you want to see how 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 really uh, buses in, has been produced or built in our factory in Poland. Uh, if you're more looking into that, um, and of course one, one other thing, uh, I mean temperature controlling of batteries. Batteries needs to be not too hot. Really, we, it's very important to keep them cool or according to the temperature controlling. So the temperature control of batteries is very important in order to keep them uh, in shape. Otherwise you wear out the battery and you lose and, and then it will cost more than you really uh, have expected. So temperature controlling is important. Uh, then of course the battery packs. Uh, in, in our operation we, we have a uh, I provided this example, one pack like this is 94 kilowatt hours, it should be an hour here. Um, and then you can fit a, a number of uh, different type of packs, uh, of course, uh, depending on what you need. Uh, and then you can fit up to five battery packs up to 470 kilowatt hour, that's a lot really. Uh, but but in, then you also um, you, you also need to look into the um, kind of the mass here. Well, I mean, one of these pack costs, is, it's a lot of weight, like almost 600 kilograms for one pack. And that, that will put quite the stress on the, on the chassis and the mounting where to, where to put this. Uh, of course, the C rating, how much that, that's the kind of, how much you can charge uh, depending on the on the size of the battery. This is also, uh, I mean, a, a C rate of, of one, it means that you can charge a 94 kilowatt hour battery with 94 kilowatt. Um, in, at the same time, you have the voltage of 600 volt, and that's quite high actually. So you need to be careful. This is, um, this is lethal, which means that you need to comply with the regulatory framework of, of this. Um, and I think the, we, we, we need also to, to understand that the bus is part of a system. So it, the uh, charging system needs also to be taken into consideration. Um, there are kind of two main way of, of charging a bus, the CCS2 or the kind of the, the normal, uh, it's actually in AC, AC but, but that's, uh, the, this is the, when you do the overnight charging or you, or you can, um, charging at the depot, you, you dock it in and you have 
in the in our case up to 150 kilowatt maybe you don't need that much for a depot uh, charging overnight but this needs to be fitted in so a charging solution needs to be be in place uh, and and also the the in onboard charging equipment needs to be there in order to manage the charging uh, uh, in order to manage the charging to, to really make sure you don't you really use the batteries in, in a, a good way as possible a lot of experience that, that this is in one area where we have learned a lot really but but the, the whole sector is need to learn this so collaboration with the charging equipment uh, needs to be be in place when it comes to the what we call then the opportunity charging up charge standard this is when you can charge uh, on route or at the end uh, when stops or, or, or starting or end stop or maybe also in the middle of a route depending on what type of route selection you have maybe you have high hills or uh, you need to you can have time uh, and that there is an actually an, uh, an industry standard for this and this all there are a lot of, um, yeah, I mean, you, you can do this in different ways. There are different kind of pantograph solutions in order to, to solve this. And I would also highlight that there are a lot of good standards already available. You can click on the link uh, in the presentation I will actually see on this opcharge.org. And it, it, it tells more about own, not only the the the, um, the the sharding itself it's quite quite good uh, a reference really to also depend when it we discuss about electric safety you have the insulation voltage so what what do you need to consider um, electromagnetic compatibility uh, you don't want uh, so there the, so there are a lot of electrical considerations communication things how to really because the, the part, charging standard also include the communication between the bus and the charging stations so really so there are this is a new technology that needs to be also taken into consideration uh, and in, in this case also is a wi-fi connection between the bus and the charging equipment so I think there are a lot of material available. Uh, it, it's important to bring into when really working on, on the bus system. Finally, when it comes to technology, um, I mean, we have taken, uh, this has been a journey where we need to, the, the diesel engine, of course you have the diesel tank or the, ex, but also the uh, yats or the exhaust after treatment systems with the new emission regulation coming uh, this has been more and more advanced so i think uh, a european <clears throat> uh, bus with diesel engine and you can also drive that on hvo or some biofuel um, it getting quite complex so it, it's a complex machine um, but it's also very, it's a very good machine, very efficient, which means that our step we have been taking towards the hybridization. So we have been working with hybrid buses where you have the electric uh, engine working together with the, uh, with the ICE. And of course you need the battery, but you also need the engine, the after treatment system because you have emissions. So, now we see more a further step towards the full electric battery electric um, buses but and, and then the development then for, of course for the electric motor um, so it, this is of course we have this is a development that goes quite quickly the electric motor in this case there's a single motor but we also run double could be double configuration in order to optimize this the speed the torque um, and also drivability you have maintainability the 
robustness and all this. There is also a gearbox in this to kind of connect this to the normal drivetrain. And then you need to consider the battery packs. The battery management system uh, gets quite complicated because there's a lot of high power electronics that needs to, to play here together to really drive um, drive the el electric motor uh, in an optimal way. You and also need you have the onboard charger. We you can consider energy re regeneration in order to to optimize the usage of energy uh, over. Uh, so there are many. I would say the step comparing the ICE. Uh, to this and, and there are a lot of new technology coming into play and elect electric and electronics and software gets even more important here so there are new new technology new knowledge that needs to be for for maintaining the, these vehicles you need to have more electronic electric and software skills uh, depend and and when it comes to an ice I see, and diesel engine is more a mechanical uh, piece where you can see the diesel pump or this, the, uh, all these more mechanical uh, engineering. So I think the step here is towards here. It's a lot of new technology that needs to be taken into consideration. So summing up my presentation today, um, of course, you need to be aware of the driving forces. What are you trying to achieve with the electrification of the public transport system? What are really the needs? Um, what are the operational targets? How will this? What are? How will this bus be used? That will put the requirements. How much battery you need on board? What type of charging? Uh, where to locate the charging? and how to build this up the system. And this is also closely linked to the business models. Who, what are the costs for this? Uh, if you have a very expensive or low cost bus, you might have a very expensive charging equipment. And, uh, and they, maybe the business model doesn't add, add, add up in a, in a positive way. So the, when you understand this, it's then you can really break down the requirements on the whole system, the bus charging system, the energy system, the maintenance and that. And I, and I also stress this with collaboration. It's so important to work with the right partners around the table to do this together, try to solve the, the technology topics, but you, then you need to understand that you are solving the right topics. Um, the big piece here is the energy, energy storage, the batteries. That's one of the most expensive pieces in the puzzle. Uh, and you don't want to replace them too often. Okay, and then uh, we have then the charging, the energy system linking to the electric grid, um, which is of course very important. You need to have access to this grid. Uh, otherwise, the system will not fail. And then, there, of course, the electric propulsion system will, with all the technology and new te technology that you consider here, the high power electronics, software, um, and also the, the safety issues when it comes to uh, having high power or high voltage system on board uh, that can be quite challenging. Uh, so I think uh, I will stop my presentation here.